If there's one thing you take away from listening to or watching today's podcast, it's I want you to listen to Jess and how she truly comes alive talking about something she's so passionate about, which is manta rays. And for her to pursue her passion in researching these amazing sea creatures, it didn't come without some huge changes. For her to live in the Maldives is a really big change from her countryside lifestyle growing up. And she's of she was originally afraid of boats and so for her to transition and be in these islands and helping guests to experience the manta rays and research them it came with a requirement of her overcoming these fears and adjusting to her new lifestyle let's dive in Welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada, and in this episode, I'm traveling in the Maldives. Sometimes our really big badass moments in life are just a result of having small badass moments that lead up to it. And so today I'm bringing in an amazing guest, Jess, and this story is to help inspire you to be just 1% more badass today than you were yesterday. I had the opportunity to dive with this badass woman as she was researching manta rays out here. So let's, you know what, let's dive straight in. I'm Jess, um, or Madidata locally is what everyone calls me. It means manta sister in the <laughs> local language. <laughs> I'm um, working as a project manager for the Manta Trust here in the Maldives. Yeah. Um, but I'm a marine biologist overall. I love that. How long have you been with the Manta Trust team and in the Maldives for? Three years now. Three years uh, yes. is a long <laughs> time. It is. It just flies by though. Like when you're doing what you love and it doesn't feel like like I've been here for three years but when yeah. I look back and all the things I've seen and what I've done I mean I've been in the Maldives for four years mm -hmm. but with the Manta Trust for three that's and awesome it's been actually amazing. I would love to hear like what is an average I know every day is different but what does an average day look like for you uh, it completely varies so during our research season because mantas are seasonal mm -hmm. and they do move locations um, I will be out in the water every day, whether that's on a research boat, whether that's with guests. Mm -hmm. um, get me out there, get me swimming with them, <laughs> collecting data, <laughs> doing what I can. And then when the season ends, we have a lot of data to process. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of time in the office. We still go out on guest excursions and we get out with the mantas as much as we can. Yeah. But we also have to process everything we've collected and learn about the sightings. So whether that's new mantas, whether that's um, sizes of them or analyzing camera traps that we've set down mm -hmm. it's all got to be processed and okay hold on so there are two yeah. things <laughs> i've seen you doing on this trip that i loved just observing one was setting up the underwater cameras mm -hmm. actually let's start there tell me like what how what do you guys use for the underwater cameras how long do they stay there and like what's the intent so we have um just a simple gopro but it's formatted to turn on and off at sunset and take a photograph every minute. Mm. So that's one version of the camera setup. Mm -hmm. It's got a couple of battery packs. So on one version of it, it can stay down for up to 10 days, mm. which is perfect because for that 10 days on one location, which we usually use cleaning stations for, these yeah. areas where manta rays come mm. in, naturally get cleaned by the fishes, we leave the camera pointing at that and every minute we'll get a photo during the daylight hours. Mm. So over the time we can see the manta frequency of using it, yeah. how long that manta stays cleaning oh, for, whether so it's cool. a minute or whether it's an hour. Yeah. Um, Actually, what's the average cleaning time? I would say from what I've seen on this trip, looking mm -hmm. at the photos, about 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. From, which is longer than we think. Uh, but they they just stay around and even just from that minute every photo mm -hmm. we might not have that manta in every shot but mm -hmm. if you have one at the beginning of the 40 minutes and one at the end you know they haven't gone very far or they oh, haven't gone off to go and feed yeah yeah actually so speaking of shots one of the things that i loved observing was the type of data that you're going through and in particular photographs of the belly of the manta. Yeah. Share with share with everyone what, what that is. So mantas have, the, for me, the most beautiful spot patterns on their undersides, so on their bellies. This is like a fingerprint. So when they're born, that spot pattern is exactly the same throughout their entire life. It hardly changes at all. So as a researcher, we use it 
as a non-invasive way to study them. So non-invasive basically means we don't have to tag them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't involve any contact with the animal. Anyone in the world can take a photo of a manta's belly, submit it to the Manta Trust through the website and learn which manta they saw, where it's been seen before. I didn't know about so that much. second part. So yeah. I will link that URL th below. It's really interesting to see <laughs> it because I, I think I only had like five ID shots. Sorry. Still, <laughs> but it's so many. <laughs> but I did see a lot. But what was so cool was every time I had the opportunity to see a manta, I was looking to see what kind of spot pattern it had, yeah. which is really cool. So actually one more piece that was really fascinating to me was as you were putting that data into the database, talk about the way you kind of match, match it up mm -hmm. because I thought it was interesting how the mantas are, are sorted and filtered. Yeah, so in some countries where they have smaller databases, it's going to be a much easier job. In the Maldives, we have currently the world's largest population of mantas that have been recorded. So mm -hmm. I'm talking 5,100 plus images yeah. to sort through. So at the minute, we've been doing it manually the whole time I've been with the Manta Trust. We take our image, we crop rotate it so that the gills are facing upwards, the gills are what they breathe from, and then we compare it to our database, which is just one image of that manta organized in a, a PDF file, very simple. Yeah. And we just scroll through and we find the matching manta. <laughs> and once we've checked one gallery, we move on to the next gallery, whether that's the new mantas or regional, so a specific area. Kind of like a game of memory. It is but a not matching game. <laughs> but when we were in Ra, I knew a lot of the mantas. That's cool. Because you start, like, I've been in Ra for two years, so. I do know the mantas by heart. I might not know their code name because mm -hmm. code names are like numbers, but by the spot pattern, I know I've seen them before and then I, I love start that. to learn them. Talk to me about your most favorite manta experience on this trip. On this trip, I <laughs> I loved one. Do you remember the manta that was very flirty with all the girls? <laughs> <laughs> so that man <laughs> that manta is called Looney, which definitely described his personality very well. And he, at the cleaning stations, was very actively trying it on, on multiple days with different females, um, which I found really interesting because usually it's the female that releases the pheromone to say, I'm ready to mate, mm -hmm. and it starts the courtship train. Yeah. But in this instance, it was Looney trying <laughs> it on with the females, and they were just pieing him off. <laughs> like, oh, that's um, funny. But no, that, that for me was great because uh, that action of courtship is just, it's fast, they're moving, they're here, they're everywhere, they're belly rolling, and I just love it. Actually, the way in which the mantas reproduce is really interesting. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, so when that female has released that pheromone, um, she usually does it around cleaning station areas, it will attract males within the area to that area to start what we call a courtship train. So it's the female who are larger than the males leading the way and the males lined up behind her following. It's basically a competition. So <laughs> whichever one keeps up with her, wherever she goes, they should follow. They should be on her tail. If she belly rolls, they should belly roll. Mm. And it's very active. It can even last up to three days. Wow. And the most males they've seen behind her has been 30 different males following for her attention. Wow. When she's made her choice or whichever one she feels is the fittest, they will actually come together belly to belly near the surface. And the male will in a way bite, but they don't technically have any teeth. So it's more like a suction down mm -hmm. on always the left fin. Mm -hmm. So you might have seen some females with that scarring on the left fin. Yeah. Or like when we were sorting through images, we would always target that um, that scar mark in one of the photos. Yeah. And that allows us to also know if a female is an adult because she has mated. Mm, so I that see. scar tells us as researchers she is officially an adult now because I she has mated. That. Okay, yeah. so this whole thing learning about mantas has been <laughs> such a badass experience for me. Actually, you, you had mentioned you oftentimes take guests out. Are there ever a time, is there ever a time where guests are afraid to get in the water with mantas? And if they are, yeah. like, what do you tell them? A lot more than I realized, actually. Um, we have a lot of people which are super keen to get in and really active. And they come to the Maldives and on their list of things to do while they're here is to swim with mantas. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, we have people that we're talking to them about mantas and the, they're interested what the Manta Trust is and we encourage them to come on the excursion and their instant reaction is no, 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 I, I'm not going to do that. And 
sometimes it's linked to not getting in the water at all. Some people really don't like the ocean, the blue. Um, a lot of people I've realized don't like fish. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> which is with animals, um, when, they, when they've watched programs, and of, of course a lot of it is about mm. shark related mm -hmm. as well, they just don't like to swim in an area where they don't know what's underneath them or what could come to them. So we just talked to them about like the, the, s the safety of it and mm. the animals are, are fascinating and, and that they can wear a life jacket. So water wise, they are completely safe. Mm -hmm. We always have specialized guides holding buoys, which the guests can hold on to. So when it comes to the swimming aspect, it's mm -hmm. very easy to, to explain to people that you are completely safe and yeah. you will come with us. When it comes to the animals and we talk about the, the gentleness of the manta rays, I have to jump in here really quick to interrupt this amazing podcast because there's a bonus tip in here, which is sometimes you just got to roll with things in life and especially in travel and especially being a creator while traveling. And while we were outside, it was it was not cool outside and my GoPro ran out of batteries in the middle of our interview. And as we moved inside, we it didn't really work out. There was nowhere to really film and people needed to be packing and leaving, etc. But you know what? We rolled with it anyway and we still delivered the message we wanted to get to you all. So we are going to take it inside into the air conditioning, thank goodness for more of this episode, but I wanted to just share with you really quick. This is in no way sponsored by Manta Trust, but I love this team. And one of the things I think is amazing is you have the opportunity to adopt a manta ray. And it's not super expensive. We're talking like 20, 30, 40 bucks or whatever. And it's something where when you donate and adopt a manta ray, not only do you get a lot of fun, like cards and pictures and information, but it helps this team to do more of the amazing work that they're doing. Check the show notes for all of that info because I think it's really amazing. All right, let's take it inside. Y'all know you gotta roll with the punches and you wanna know what happened? We ran out of battery. So now we are in an air conditioned inn in which we shall finish this story. Tell me about a time during your time in the Maldives where you had to like overcome a fear. So there's always gonna be like multiple things that, that add up that you've got to get over. Um, I would say that for me, one of the things that I wasn't used to is being on boats all the time, every day. <laughs> and in my countryside life that I've grown up in, in Oxfordshire. And where was, where did you grow up? Oxfordshire. Oh, so wow, I've yeah. very much landlocked. Um, I've had a very wild life kind of themed life with the chickens and horses and <laughs> dogs and everything, but not marine life, not out on the ocean. Mm -hmm. So when I was moving here and every day, everything is water, Maldives, it's 99% ocean. Yeah. To get anything to your island, it has to come on a boat. To get mm -hmm. to your island, it's on a boat. And um, when we get bad weather and the water is not completely flat and calm, and the first time I just remember the boat rocking like this, <laughs> And my Which, by the way, that's how I feel right now, just sitting here, because <laughs> we've been on that boat for uh, two and a half weeks. Yeah, and so your legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel that for a few days. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so no, just, uh, you just hear horror stories of boats capsizing, and that's always what I think about when I hit even the smallest wave, and that's something I've definitely had to work on, yeah. not panicking every time. Trust that the captain knows what he's doing, because yeah. they do that the boat is going to get you there safely and not just worry about it. And over time, I mean, four years, I've had some bad experiences, but it's all been fine and I'm still here. She's still <laughs> here. And tell me, would you consider yourself a badass? <laughs> I don't know about badass, <laughs> but I do love sharing what I do with everyone. and. If I could do that for the rest of my life, which I definitely plan to, then I hope I can share man not just mantas, marine life, ocean experiences, and the world that we don't get to see every day. Yeah. It's like underwater. So mm -hmm. just for people to be immersed in all of that, you have to 
I'll be a badass if you want me to be a badass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And where can yeah. people find you? Um, on Instagram, I have my Maddie Data account. So it's my one where you'll see a lot of ocean content. Um, or my email from the Manta Trust as well. I love that. And I'll link all of that below so you guys can find her. Thank <laughs> you so much for doing this Thank with me. Oh, what a story and what an amazing experience it's been spending time in the Maldives with the Manta Rays. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you add a review. It really helps to get it distributed. And don't forget to check out the show notes. Adopt a manta ray. We would love for you to participate in this because it helps these researchers to do more with the manta rays all over the world. I'm Christine Lazada. I'm your host. Connect with me on social media and I will see you in the next adventure. Ciao.